today's lesson is about factoring quadratics when a is greater than one. And what we mean by that is the leading coefficient, the number or the the number that's with the x squared, that has to be bigger than one. Um, so this coefficient right there. So in this example, that number is three x square or that coefficient is three so that's meaning the a is greater than one this is definitely much more difficult than what we were doing before remember the last time we just had to find factors of c that added up to b way more complex this time um so buckle up it's time to pay attention here first thing first we need to make sure that the equation is equal to zero if the equation is not equal to zero then this whole process doesn't work because remember, the idea of solving for these, we're looking for two things that multiply together to get to zero, and for that to happen, one or both have to be equal to zero. So that's an easy fix, actually, though. It's not too bad. So the only thing that we have to do here, because this negative four is by itself over here, we just have to move it to that side using inverse operations. So we just have to add four to both sides. So we're looking at three x squared plus 13 x. We can't combine that with the four, because they are not like terms, so it's it's simple. Just add four to both sides, so we get three x squared plus 13 x plus four equals zero. Now, the first method we're gonna look at is the guess and check method. Uh, it's not my recommended method, uh, but it's possible. Uh, sometimes you get lucky. The reason I don't recommend it is because it's not always gonna give you the answer the first time, or the second time, or the third time, so you might have to do uh, multiple runs at it to see if it's going to work or not. So if we remember, the last term is going to come from the, uh, the f these are going to be factors of four. Factors of four, really easy off the top of my head, two and two. All right, last terms are always going to multiply to give us that. Um, now, when a was equal to 1, we just had to have those add up to get us the middle term. In this case, it's different, though, because we, have, we don't have a coefficient of 1 on the x squared. So 3x squared, that's pretty simple. It has to be 3x and x. And then we just have to kind of go through and check, does this work? So the first terms, 3x and x, obviously that's giving us 3x squared. The outer terms, 3x and 2, that's going to give us 6x. 2 times x is 2x. And then obviously the 2 and the 2 give us 4. These give us 8x, but that doesn't work. Um, that's not 13x. So trial 1 uh, was a no-go here. So let's get rid of all of this. Let's try again. We know we're going to have 3x and x. Uh, those are the only factors of 3x squared. 3 is a prime number, but we need to change the the twos. So let's try uh, other factors of 4 are 1 and 4. So we still have the 3x squared. We've got 3x times 4. That gives us 12x. I like where we're going here. 1 times x is x, and I know right away that that's going to give me 13x. And then just to finish it out, 1 times 4 is 4. So there we go. We have 3x plus 13x plus 4. That is what we're looking for. So this problem factored. I didn't mean to do all that. 3x plus 1 times x plus 4 equals 0. So as we did before, now we need to solve this. So either 3x plus 1 equals 0 or x plus 4 equals 0. This one's simple. We just have to subtract 4 from both sides. So x is either going to be negative 4. The other one's a little bit more difficult. There are two steps here. We need to subtract 1 from both sides. So we get 3x equals negative 1. And then divide by 3. So x is negative 1 third. Or x is negative 4. And that's going to be our answer. So just to kind of review... First of all, we need to make sure that the equation equal, is equal to zero. So in this case, we had to move the negative 4 to the other side. So it was 3x squared plus 13x plus 4 equals zero. So that's always step one. That's important. And then we use the guess and check method here. It, this one wasn't too bad. There's 
Three is a prime number, so there's only two factors of that. Four, either one and four or two and two, so that wasn't terrible. <coughs> but I'm going to show you another method that works every single time. And when you think about numbers, like, um, I'm going to give you an example here. What if I had, uh, let's say, 12x squared plus 25x and let's go with, uh, let's say, 16 equals 0. This is when we run into some problems. And I don't even know if there's a solution to this or not. But think about all the factors of 16. You have 1 and 16, 2 and 8, and 4 and 4. And then all the factors are 12. You have 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. And this gets difficult because not only do you have to try to pair up 1 and 12 with 1 and 16, but remember the order of the outer and the inner terms. So you actually have to look at, and let me give you an example here. You'd have to look at x plus 1 and 12x plus 16. And if that doesn't work, you may also have to look at x plus 16 and 12x plus 1. And if that doesn't work, then you got to do the same thing with 2 and 8. So you would have to put in x. So we'd have x plus 2 and x plus 8, or 12x plus 8. And if that doesn't work, switch them around. And if that doesn't work, we'd have to go with 4 and 4. And guess what? If none of those worked, then we would have to check 2 and 6, and 1 and 16, and 2 and 8, and 4 and 4, times 2, because you have to switch all of those around. And then if none of those worked, you got to check 3 and 4, with, with 1 and 16, and 16 and 1, and with 2 and 8, and 8 and 2, and with 4, well, 4 and 4, they're the same, so that would just be 5 times 4 for those. But you're looking at a total of 15 different combinations here that you could potentially have to go through. So that is why I definitely recommend against the guess and check or trial and error method. And what we're going to look at instead is an idea of um, we find factors of A times C. And this is why it's important to understand the standard form of an equation. So you figure out what A and C are. So in this case, remember it was... 3 times 4, all right, so 3 times 4 is 12, so we needed to find factors of 12 that add up to B, and in this case, that B was 13, all right, so let's go ahead and go through this. We already know what the answer was, but I'm going to show you how this works. So factors of 12 that add up to 13. So factors of 12, I mean, you think of the very first one, 1 and 12, bingo. They add up to 13. That's perfect. Um, 2 and 6 only add up to 8. That doesn't work. 3 and 4 add up to 7. So it's 1 and 12. So now what we have to do is we have to split up that B into 1X and 2X. So let me show you how that works here. And we're going to go through uh, probably three or four of these examples to, to show you how you... Just, just to get you comfortable with it. All right, so we're going to take this 13x here, and we're going to change that to 12x plus x. Those were the factors of 12 that added up to 13. And we're going to leave the 3x squared, and we are going to leave the plus 4. And... If you look at the idea, you find factors of AC that add up to B, and then we factor by grouping. So we're going to group these things together. So I'm going to group the 3x squared and the 12x, and I'm going to group the x plus 4. And we're going to factor each of these. So for the first group, I see that I can take out a 3x from both of them. And when I pull out that 3x, I'm just left with x here, and I'm left with... And what you'll notice is you have the same factor in the other one. And that's always going to work. When you factor by grouping in a situation, because we chose factors of AC that add up to B, it's not a coincidence. It's always going to work that we're going to end up with the same factor at some point. 
So we're going to factor again. That's what factor by grouping does. So because I have an x plus 4, I'm going to pull that x plus 4 out in front. And what am I left with? I'm left with this 3x. And whatever number's out here, now since there isn't one, we know that there's a 1. So I have 3x plus 1 instead. And that's exactly what we had. I forgot the 1. That's exactly what we had when we went through the guess and check uh, problem. So we just did x plus 4 equals 0, and we got negative 4. And then we subtract 1 divided by 3, got negative 1 third for that answer. All right, so let's go ahead. Uh, I'm going to pull up another problem here. Uh, let's go, what do we got here? Okay, 4y squared plus 3 equals negative 13y. Let me get my markers here. So, once again, let me delete this other problem as well. Once again, we need to make sure that we have the equation equal to 0. This one's not again. All right, so we have to pull this negative 13y to the other side. And I like to keep it in standard form. So we have 4y squared, and then we add that 13y. I'm putting that one next, so it's ax squared plus bx plus c, or in this case y, plus 3 equals 0. And now we're looking at this. Find factors of ac. So a times c, once again, is 12. So factors of 12, that add up to 13. This is going to give us the, the same factors here. All right. Uh, but it's going to be slightly different here because of the, the A and the C are different. So factors of 12 that add up to 13 are 12 and 1. So once again, we've got 12Y plus 1Y. That's what we're splitting that 13Y into. And we're leaving the 4Y squared and the plus 3. And we're going to go ahead and group these. I've got the plus sign. So I look at the common factors of 4y and 12y. Both of them have a y. So we're going to factor that y out. And we can factor a 4 out as well. So we'll have y plus 3. And then over here, I'm going to go ahead and put the 1 here. Just so we know that when we factor out, we're left with a 1. And then we remember... This is always going to happen. We are going to have the same factor here that we can factor out. So we have y plus 3, and we have 4y plus 1 left equals 0. I forgot to equal zeros up here. I apologize. And then we set both of these equal to 0. So y plus 3 equal to 0, or 4y plus 1 equals 0. And so we'll get y equals negative 3 from the first one or negative 1 fourth from the second one when we subtract 1 and divide by 4. All right, let's move on to another problem here. So let's get rid of this. Bring another one up. Okay. Okay. I don't think we're going to be having the same factors for this one, but once again, we have to first make sure that it's equal to zero. This one is not. This one actually has two terms on the other side. Um, personally, make the, make the A stay positive. It's always the easiest thing to do. So when I'm, I'm going to move both of these to the other side. I'm going to keep the 5u squared. So I have 5u squared. And when I move 17u to the other side, it's going to give me negative 17u. And when I move the negative 6 to the other side, it's going to be plus 6. So step one, make sure it's equal to 0. All right. Then we're going, what are factors of a times c that add up to 17? So our a and our c are 5 and 6. So we're looking for factors of 30 whose sum is negative 17. And it's really, really important to recognize that this is a negative problem. So because we have a positive C, so 5 times 6 is a positive number, both of these factors are going to end up being negative. 
So factors of 30, we know they're both going to be negative, negative 1 and negative 30. That adds up to negative 31. So that's no good. So let's move on to the next one. Negative 2 and negative 15. That gives us negative 17, so that's what we're going to be using. We're going to be using negative 2 and negative 15. I'm going to write that up there so I can get rid of this and free up some space here. So as always, now the next step is split that B term into negative 2 and negative 15. So we've got 5u squared, and instead of negative 17, I'm going to bring on that 5u squared. 5u squared, and instead of negative 17, let's go with negative 2u and negative 15u plus 6 equals 0. And that, remember, that c stays the same. So we're going to factor by grouping once again. Um, 5 and 2 don't have a common factor, but they both have a u. So I'm going to factor out that u, and I'll be left with 5u minus 2. 15 and 6, they share a common factor of 3. So I'm going to factor out that 3. Now, <clears throat> here's something to keep in mind. When I factor out that 3, I actually have negative 5u plus 2. And what I'm going to notice right now is those aren't the same. 5u minus 2 and negative 5u plus 2, it's just the exact opposite of this factor. And remember, we want that factor to be the same. <clears throat> so the quick, easy fix is instead of factoring out a 3, we actually factor out a negative 3. And when we factor out negative 3, negative 3 times a positive 5 will give us that negative 15. And negative 3 times a negative 2 gives us that positive 6. And now those factors match up. So we can factor those out. So we've got 5u minus 2. And remember what we have left here is u and minus 3. So we have u minus 3 as the other factor. And that equals 0. And then the final step is solving each of those for 0. So when 5u minus 2 equals 0, I add 2 to both sides and divide by 5. So u is either going to equal 2 fifths or the other problem, u minus 3 equals 0. We're simply adding 3 to both sides. So u equals 3. So we've got two options. u is either equal going to going to be equal to two-fifths or to three. All right, so this process, it uh, it's rather in-depth, but if you follow this process, it's always going to give you the right answer without having to guess and check. Remember that one problem, you might have to guess and check up to 15 different times. This will give you the exact answer every single time. Um, so, once again, we find factors of AC that add up to B, and then we factor by grouping. And what I think I should mention as well, right after you find those factors that add up to B, remember the next step is split B into those factors. So when B in this case was negative 17U, remember we split those into negative uh, 15u and negative 2u. So we didn't change the value of anything. Everything stayed exactly the same. Um, we just kind of worked a little uh, little math of magic to make it work for us the best that we can. So let's go ahead and look at one more example here. And I took the time to type it out this time so we can get a clear example of what's going on. So this could kind of be your, your final one to look at. So 5u squared minus 7u equals 6 is the problem that we're looking at. And the very first thing we notice, once again, it's not set equal to 0. So that's step 1. Make sure that the equation is equal to 0. Step 2 is figure out what AC is. So once we get it equal to 0, we see that A is 5 and C is negative 6. Very important to pay attention to the signs. Just look to the left. Um, I don't know if I've ever introduced you to my friend Lefty Louie, but he always looks to the left to figure out the sign of the number. So we have to make sure that we're doing that. 
So the sine of 5 is positive. The sine of the 6 is negative because we look to the left to see that it's negative. So 5 times negative 6 gives us negative 30. Now, this is the first time that we've seen a negative one here. Um, so we have to find factors of negative 30 that add up to negative 7. So since we're finding factors of negative 30, we've got one positive and one negative to deal with. But since they have to add up to negative 7, we know that the negative factor has to be bigger. Um, so in this case, we have 3 and negative 10. And the negative 10 is obviously bigger than 3 because when we add them together, it ends up being farther to the negative side. So that's why the negative 10 is going to be bigger. Now the other thing that I want to talk about is when you split that negative 7 u up, it doesn't matter if you put 3u minus 10u first, like I have here, or if you do minus 10u and plus 3. Um, so I went through both examples here to show you that it really, it doesn't matter. So we split that middle term, we split the b into those two factors. Um, once again, not changing the value of anything. And then we factor by grouping. So when we grouped here, I grouped 5u squared and 3u and figured out 5 and 3, they're relatively prime. Um, they don't share any common factors. So the only thing that I could factor out was u. And that left me with 5u plus 3. Um, and then I also factored negative 10u and negative 6. And remember, look to the left. This minus sign right here does not go with the 3u. It goes with the 10. So we have to keep in mind that that's negative 10u. So when I remember that I had 5u plus 3, if I factored out just 2, I would have negative 5u minus 3, which is what we don't want. Um, we saw that, uh, that negative in the last example. So we want to make sure that we factor out a negative 2 to make sure that these two factors are the same. All right. Um, and then that common factor is 5u plus 3. So when we factor out that common binomial, we factor out the 5u plus 3 right here. And we're left with u and negative 2. So we got u minus 2. And if we look to the other example, what if I flip flop the 3u and the negative 10? This time, when I factor these, I can take a 5u out of both of them, and that leaves me with u minus 2. And then when I look at the other one, positive 3u and minus 6, I can factor a 3 out of both of them, leaving me with u minus 2. We don't have to mess around with the negatives because both are exactly u minus 2. And in this case, we factor that u minus 2 out, and we are left with 5u plus 3. So when we look at, you know, how we started at this step, flipping the, the 3u and the negative 10u to where we finish, we have the same exact thing, just the order is different. We have 5u plus 3 times u plus 2, and order multiplication doesn't matter. It's commutative. Um, so that's no big deal. And then we just have to set each of those equal to zero because once again, if you're going to multiply two things together and get zero, the only way for that to be true is if 5u plus 3 equals zero and or u minus 2 equals zero. So when we solve both of those, we end up with u is going to be negative 3 fifths or it's going to be 2. All right. Your assignment is called factoring quadratics. When A is greater than 1, it is on Alex. Uh, these questions I know are a little bit more in depth, so I only put five of them on this assignment, but they're going to be worth two points each for a total of 10 points. And don't forget that you can always Zoom with me during third period um, or during my office hours. Um, if, if you are not available during third period or my other office hours, send me an email. I might be able to set up a separate Zoom or give you a link to one of my other Zoom sessions if nobody is in there. Um, but that's really the best way to do this is through Zoom. Um, I've been trying to explain some things through email, but it's just not as good. It's not as easy, and it doesn't allow for that conversation of going back and forth of what you understand and don't understand. Um, so please, please, please Zoom with me whenever you need help. Uh, it's easy. It's, it's fun. I miss you guys. I wish we uh, could go back to school. Um, but before I get sentimental and shed a tear... I uh, wish you guys the best of luck with this assignment. Year's coming to an end. Let's finish strong.